Hello fourth grade students. In today's video for reading, we're going to continue working on main idea. So earlier in this week, you did a little bit of skill practice um, on that website that I gave you. There were two different online tutorials that you did uh, just to kind of help you better identify the main idea and really understand the importance of finding those key details, also known as the supporting details that will either prove or explain the main idea of a text. Um, and remember, the main idea of a text is the most important point of the text. It's what the author wanted you to know about this text, what the author wanted you to remember after having read the text. Uh, so that's what we're going to do in today's lesson. We're going to practice that a little bit more. Um, so I'm actually going to do a little practice passage with you about seahorses. Um, and then you're going to have some time to also do some partner practice as well with a separate text. All right, so the materials that you're going to need for today, they were in your green folder when you came in this morning. You're going to need this text right here. It's a packet um, and it's titled The World of Coral Reefs. So make sure you have that. You're also going to need this text here, which is titled Seahorses, a truly unique fish. So both of those again were in your green folder. You're going to need a pencil to write with. And then you're also going to need these crayons here called the Find the Evidence crayons. These are inside your desk. Uh, so if you'll go ahead and pull those out now, you don't need to open this container. You don't need to start going through the crayons right now. Um, I will let you know when you need these. Okay, so just go ahead and have those out and ready to go. Um, and then you're also probably going to need a clipboard for today's partner practice. And then I will have given you that as well. Um, so you guys should have everything that you need to go for today reading lesson. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, so first, we're going to start with the seahorses text. So I'm just going to put this other one off to the side for right now. Um, so what I really want to do for you guys here in this text today is just do a very quick uh, main idea refresher. Um, it's always good, you know, especially when you're not here every day for us to just very quickly review some of the skills with a short text, and then I'll give you some time to practice our main idea skill with a partner today. So what we're going to do is I'm going to read this seahorses horses text to you and then we're going to fill in this graphic organizer together at the bottom so after having read the text we want to identify what is the topic of the story uh, so remember the topic of the story typically that's just going to be one word maybe even two words the topic should not tell us the main idea the topic should just tell us who or what the story is about, like penguins or bears or monarch butterflies. You know, that one would be two words because it's a specific type of butterfly. So we're going to identify the topic. Then we really want to ask ourselves, what was the main idea of the text? What did the author want me to know about the topic, whatever the topic may be. And then once we identify the main idea and we write our sentence, because the main idea is usually a sentence, then that's when we're going to come down here and we're going to then identify three supporting details. So details are sentences or statements from the text, but those sentences, those statements, they have a very important job. They're going to prove or explain our main idea, okay? All right, guys, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna read the text to you and I need you to follow along. Our title, Seahorses, a Truly Unique Fish. And here you can see we have a photograph of a seahorse. That is not an illustration. It doesn't look like a cartoon drawing. It is a photograph. So that gives us a good clue that this text is most likely um, a nonfiction text, or you could also call it an informational text. All right, here we go. Seahorses are a unique animal and are of the fish species. They are found in tropical temperate waters throughout the world. They range in size from 6 inches to 14 inches long. They are various colors and travel through the water by propelling themselves using a small fin on their back. 
This fin flutters up to 35 times per second and can leave a seahorse exhausted and sometimes dead. Unlike most fish, seahorses are monogamous. Now, I'm sure many of you, you've probably never heard that word before, monogamous. So we want to know what that word means. Sometimes an author will actually give you context clues of a word by telling you what the word actually means, by telling you explicitly what the definition of the word is. When we look at the next sentence, that's what the author here has done. So the author is going to tell us in the next sentence exactly what the word monogamous means. This means they have one mate and only one mate for the duration of their life. That's what monogamous means. They have one mate for their entire life. They stay together forever like they're a married couple, basically. Another unique feature is the fact that unlike most fish and animals, the male carries and bears the unborn young. They do so by carrying the fertilized eggs in a pouch located on the front side of their body. Seahorses have a diet of only meat and are carnivores. They can live anywhere from one to five years. They have no teeth or stomach, which means they have no place to store food for energy. Therefore, food passes through their digestive systems so quickly they must eat constantly just to stay alive. They get their name by the unique shape on their body and the fact that they are found in the seas and oceans of the world. Although seahorses are considered a fish, they are very different from most fish that you see in the water. All right, guys, so let's start with the topic. Just one word. What was the topic or what was the subject of the text? Meaning who or what was the story about? Uh, so the story was all about seahorses. We wouldn't just write fish for the topic because fish is a very broad category. You know, there's hundreds of thousands of different types of fish that exist. And it wasn't just about fish. It was about a specific fish called a seahorse. So our topic here, one word is seahorses. Okay, so go ahead and write seahorses there in your graphic organizer. Now let's get to the, the trickier part here. The main idea. What was the MIP? What was the most important point of the text? What was the entire text about for seahorses? Um, so was the entire text about the appearance of a seahorse? What it looks like? No, I mean, that was mentioned in there, you know, about how they have a small fin on their back, you know, the shape of their body, but there was so much more to the text than just the appearance of a seahorse. So that can't be the main idea. Um, is the main idea about the life cycle of a seahorse? Well, I mean, it did tell us that they can live anywhere from one to five years. But again, that was just that one sentence here in the third paragraph. So see, whenever you're trying to figure out the main idea, it's good sometimes to ask yourself those questions. Was the text all about this? Was the text all about this? And, you know, if it was only one sentence of the text, if it was only mentioned one time, guys, that's not going to be your main idea. You know, we're looking for, you know, something that was in there several different times. Um, like I know there's one word that kind of popped up a few times here, and it might not be the exact same word that pops up, but it's, it's words that mean the same. It's synonyms, and that would be the word unique. Uh, so that's one thing that you can actually do whenever you're trying to figure out the main idea. Look for repetitive words. Look for words that are being used throughout the text over and over and over again. That's going to help you have a really good idea as to what the author was trying to point out to you in the text or trying to teach you in the text. So do this with me. Um, look at the title here. I already see the word unique. Here it is one time. So let's circle the word unique and let's go back through the text. Let's just kind of skim through it quickly. And how many times can we see a word like that? Well, in the very first sentences, sentence, I'm sorry, seahorses are a unique animal. So there's unique. Um, let's see. Do we see a word like that anywhere else? 
Um, ooh, right here. If you look at the beginning of the second paragraph, unlike most fish. So see, even though that's not really the exact same word, it is a word that means about the same thing. So unique, you know, refers to something that is special, something that is different, something that stands out. And so when it says unlike most fish, then it's saying, you know, a lot of fish have this one thing in common, but the seahorse is special in this one particular way. And that was that seahorses are monogamous. That is something special about them that is unlike most other fish. So unique and unlike most fish kind of mean the same thing. Uh, let's keep going. Ooh, look right here again. Another unique feature. There's that word again, unique. So guys, look, we're not even halfway through the text yet. And look, we've already got the word unique or a word like it one, two, three, four times. Let's keep going. Uh, so I'm just kind of skimming here, which means I'm not rereading the text. I'm just kind of using my eyes to glare over the words and see if a word like unique stands out to me. Um, nope, nothing in that paragraph. And then we look at the very last paragraph. Um, they get their name by the unique shape. There it is again, unique. Um, Ooh, and then the very, very end here, it says they are very different, very different. Okay, so see, that's a really good strategy that you guys need to be using when it, anytime you're asked to find the main idea of a text. So I knew that my topic was seahorses, and then what I did was just kind of skim back through the text and find words that were repeating themselves, and the word here was unique. So we have the word unique or a word that means about the same as unique several times. So how many times did we see a word like unique in the text? One, two, three, four, five, six. That, that's a lot because, I mean, this was a very short text. I mean, that text was barely even half a page long. And the word unique or a word that means the same thing as unique was in there several times. So that tells us, though, that in our main idea, you know, if we had answer choices like A, B, C, and D to choose from, you would definitely want to look for an answer choice that probably has the word unique in it. Here, we're going to write our own main idea, but our main idea sentence needs to have the word unique in it. So for our main idea, we could say something very simple like seahorses are a very unique fish or seahorses are unique in many ways. And then for our supporting details, we would just list the ways that they are unique. We would explain how they are unique, okay? So for our main idea here, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna write our main idea sentence, which is that seahorses are unique in many ways. And see how that's more detailed? If I say that seahorses are unique, okay, well, that's just a few words. But if I say they're unique in many ways, then that's being more specific. And you're telling me that there's a lot of really special features about this fish. And then we can just list those features as our supporting detail. All right, so for our main idea, we're going to write this together here on this line. Seahorses are unique in many ways. Seahorses are unique in many ways. Okay, so make sure you go ahead and write that down. Seahorses are unique in many ways. That's going to be our, our main idea here. Okay, all right, so now we need to go back in the text and we need to start looking for supporting details. So remember, those supporting details, they need to prove or explain the main idea. So if you're telling me that seahorses are unique in many ways, well, tell me, how are they unique? Give me three statements, three facts, three details, three sentences in the text that tell me how they are unique, okay? So, like, let's look at a non-example. A bad example would be right here. Seahorses are considered a fish, okay? Well, that doesn't tell me how they are unique. Remember, the key word here is unique. 
Tell me how they're special. Tell me how they're different. Okay. So let's go back in the text together and let's go ahead and underline our details first and then we will write them down. Um, so kind of just, you know, going paragraph by paragraph here. Um, but I do think that in each paragraph, there's definitely some interesting, unique facts about seahorses that stand out. And then we can also look at where we've already circled the words unique because, I mean, if the word unique is in the sentence, the author is explaining to you how they are unique. So look at the second paragraph here. It says, unlike most fish, seahorses are monogamous. So the fact that they are monogamous, they have one mate for their entire life, that's going to be a really good supporting detail. That shows me one of the ways that seahorses are special. Seahorses are different. They are monogamous. Also right here, um, and I think this is, in my opinion, probably the most interesting way in which seahorses are unique. Um, it says another unique feature is the fact that, ooh, I missed this one earlier, unlike, so we should have circled that, unlike most fish and animals, the male carries and bears the unborn young. So we know that typically it's the female, the woman, um, who, you know, gets pregnant, has the baby, and so on and so forth. Well, not for seahorses. Unlike most fish and other animals, it's actually the male, the boy, who will carry um, and give birth to the unborn young. So that, that's an extremely unique um, fact about seahorses. So we're going to underline the male carries and bears the unborn young. That is another uh, really good supporting detail that proves how seahorses are unique. And then also, um, you know, in this paragraph here, in this third paragraph, I know we weren't able to like circle any words like unique or synonyms for the word unique, but there's definitely still some pretty good uh, supporting details in there. Now, the sentence where it says they can live anywhere from one to five years, that doesn't really show how they're unique, uh, but it does talk about how they have no teeth or stomach, which means they have no place to store food or energy. That is actually a very unique detail to know about seahorses. Um, you know, a lot of fish in the ocean, they have teeth. They have stomachs. That's where they, they store all of their food. And then that food, it gives you energy throughout the day. Um, and not just, you know, fish and animals in the ocean, but fish and animals all over the world, including people. You know, we have teeth, we have stomachs. When you eat food, it hangs out in your stomach for a little bit. And that's what gives you some energy uh, throughout the day. So even though, you know, we didn't see the word unique here, or we didn't see the word unlike, or different here. I mean, there's still some really good supporting details in that paragraph that shows how they're unique. Uh, so that's another one that we're going to underline. So they have no teeth or stomach, which means they have no place to store food for energy. Okay. And now we could have actually, you know, probably found more than three. We could probably find, you know, four or five in even just this short text here, because this text is really jam packed with ways that seahorses are unique. But remember, a lot of times you want to find the best supporting details. You want to find the best sentences in the text that really show me how those seahorses are unique. Okay. All right. So now that we've got our three details, we need to go ahead and complete our graphic organizer. Uh, so supporting detail number one, we underlined it here in the second paragraph. Seahorses are monogamous. Okay. So we're just going to literally write that word for word here in the graphic organizer. Seahorses are monogamous. Okay, seahorses are monogamous. And guys, I'm just going to go ahead and write them all down. You might be a little bit behind me in the writing, but that's okay. You've got them all literally underlined in the text. Uh, supporting detail number two, the male carries and bears the unborn young, okay? 
So that was our second unique feature. The male carries and bears the unborn young. And then supporting detail number three, they have no teeth or stomach to store food for energy. You know, notice I kind of changed that one just a little bit. I kind of shortened that sentence and it basically just says the same thing. All right, so guys, that needs to be there. Your three supporting details. Seahorses are monogamous. The male carries and bears the unborn young or detail number three, they have no teeth or stomach to store food for energy. Okay, make sure you've got that wrote down. Um, and don't lose this. I'm going to collect it at the end of the day. Somebody might need to remind me of that. But I mean, we did this together. So it shouldn't be something that you need to do at home. I just need to collect it to basically have evidence of you completing your reading lesson today. Okay. All right, guys. So if you need to pause the video, you're welcome to do that. But otherwise, I'm going to move on and start talking about our next activity. So this seahorses text we did together, you can put that off to the side now. Uh, now let's talk about this next text that you have here. So you are going to be working with a partner to uh, answer some of the questions here in this text today. And I've done this lesson a lot. It's going to take you a while. Okay. Um, this one, it's, it's not something that you can do, you know, in 10, 15, probably not even 20 minutes. So it's going to take you and your partner probably some time today and that's okay. But here's what we're going to do for this text. For this text titled The World of Coral Reefs, you obviously need the text. This is where you're going to need your Find the Evidence crayons. Again, you don't need to dump out all the crayons right now, okay? But just know here's when you're going to need them. All right, so put those off to the side for a moment. Okay, so here's what we're going to do with this story. Uh, so I'm actually not going to be talking a whole lot about main idea with this story. We are, however, going to focus more on supporting details. But sometimes, guys, what happens is you may not be asked to find supporting details to prove a main idea. Sometimes you're going to be asked to find details that prove something else, like maybe something that the author believes or maybe an idea that the author has. And that's really what we need to focus on in this text here for the rest of our lesson. All right, so just like we normally do, anytime we know we have questions to answer, we're actually going to skip over the text for right now. Um, you know, if we wanted to make a prediction here, the world of coral reefs, well, it's probably going to be an informational text you know, about coral reefs. So we're going to skip over the text for right now. And I want you to turn a couple pages and find the questions. The questions are on the very last page. And I want you to see what I mean here when I say that sometimes you're going to be asked to support or prove or explain something other than the main idea. Okay, now make sure you pay very close attention to these directions and what we're going to do here because I'm going to get you started, but then you and your partner are going to pick up where I leave off. Okay, all right, so look at question number one with me. It says red, and I'll explain what that means in just a moment. Let's look at the question first. The question here that you're going to answer after reading the text says, which statement from the text supports the fact that animals depend on coral reefs to live? So in question number one here, you are being asked to support something. You're being asked to prove or explain or show something, but you're not being asked to support the main idea. You're being asked to support something else. Okay. All right. So first thing we need to do, let's talk about the word support. So do me a favor, circle the word supports. And when you see the word support, what does that mean? Well, support, that means to prove. Okay. That means to prove. We're going to prove something. And what is it that we want to prove? Let's underline in this question what it is that we want to prove. We want to prove that animals depend on coral reefs to live. 
that animals depend on coral reefs to live. So again, you're not supporting the main idea here. You're supporting and you're proving that animals depend on coral reefs to live. Now, the reason why you see the word red here is whenever you and your partner, when you and your partner, not right now, but when you and your partner are going back and you're looking at the text together, you're going to find one sentence, maybe two, but not more than one or two. One sentence that proves to us animals depend, meaning they need coral reefs to live. When you and your partner find that sentence, you're going to underline it with a red crayon. So you're color coding the text. Very similar to what we did with our Edwin Hubble article about the telescope. Remember how you had to go back in the text and underline supporting details in yellow or in green? Same thing here. So when you think you find a sentence in the text that shows or proves animals depend on coral reefs to live, Underline that sentence in the text with your red crayon, your red crayon, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and look at the rest of the questions here, and you can see what color you're going to be using to underline your details in the text. Uh, so number two, that's when you'll use a yellow crayon. It says, which statement from the text supports the idea that coral reefs are beautiful? So another key word here is supports. And what does supports mean? It means prove. And yes, you do need to be doing this. It means to prove. And what is it here that you're trying to prove? We are trying to prove that coral reefs are beautiful. And whenever you find a sentence in the text that you think explains or shows or proves that they are beautiful, then that's when you're going to underline that sentence in the text with a yellow crayon. Okay, let's keep going here. Number three, blue. Which detail supports the fact that coral reefs are disappearing? So keyword again is supports. That means to prove. And what is it here that we are trying to prove? We're trying to prove that coral reefs are disappearing. So when you and your partner go back through the text and you find a sentence in the text that explains or shows us that coral reefs are disappearing, you're going to underline that sentence in the text with a blue crayon. Number four, green. Which statement from the text supports the idea that coral reefs may be helpful for our health? So keyword here, supports. Again, what does that mean? It means to prove. And what is it that we are trying to prove? We are trying to prove that coral reefs may be helpful for our health. So how can coral reefs benefit humans? How can it help you and I to be more healthy, basically. Uh, so again, when you and your partner find a sentence in the text that shows that, you will underline it in green. Number five, purple. Which statement from the text supports the idea that tourists provide people with jobs? Again, keyword here is supports. That means prove. And what is it that we are trying to prove? That tourists provide people with jobs. Okay, you'll underline that in purple with your partner. Okay, not with me, with your partner. Number six, orange. Which statement from the text shows that coral reefs are helpful to the environment? So again here, well actually the keyword here is not going to be supports because that's not in the question, but a word we have here that means the same as supports would be shows. Okay, show and support basically mean the same thing. So when you see the word shows, again, we're trying to prove, we're trying to explain something. And what are we trying to show or prove or explain here? That would be that coral reefs 
are helpful to the environment. So, you know, number four was how are they helpful to you and I for our health? Number six is how are they helpful to the environment? And when you and your partner find a sentence in the text that shows that, you will underline that in orange. And then last but not least, number seven, brown. Which detail from the text supports the idea that coral reefs protect land? So keyword here is supports. That means prove. And what is it that we are trying to prove? That coral reefs protect land. So when you and your partner find a sentence in the text that shows us that, then you guys will underline it with a brown crayon, okay? All righty, so you still don't need your crayons yet. Now I'm actually gonna read the text to you, okay? I'm gonna read the whole thing to you, and then I'm gonna explain to you what to do after that and how to work with your partner, where you're going to go to work with your partner, and how I want you to answer these questions, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and turn to the beginning of the story, and I'm going to read it to you and follow along. The world of coral reefs. No underlining with a crayon right now, just listen to the story. Coral reefs are special places on earth, which are very important to the environment. They are beautiful and interesting. Coral reefs are also disappearing, and that is a big problem today. A reef is a ridge that lies in shallow water. Reefs can be made of sand or rock, or they can be made of coral. Coral is really a group of animals. The animals make hard shells to live in. The hard parts of the animals make the coral reef. If the animals die, then the coral reef dies. The hard parts break away and the reef disappears. Coral reefs are found in warm parts of the ocean. They are in shallow water near islands or other land. The reefs grow well in the shallow water because the water moves around a lot. The waves push the water back and forth. The moving water brings food for the plants and animals that live in the reef. There are coral reefs near Hawaii and Florida. The biggest coral reef in the world is called the Great Barrier Reef and is near Australia. Okay, so I'm going to go on a tangent here for about five seconds. You ready? Um, so if you've ever seen the movie Finding Nemo, then you have seen the Great Barrier Reef of Australia before. That is actually the setting of a lot of the movie in Finding Nemo. That's where they are. When Nemo um, gets lost and his dad goes to find him, that's where Nemo is. He's in the Great Barrier Reef uh, near Australia. And it's very like colorful. You see all the schools of fish and stuff like that. Um, so just my little Thing that I wanted to tell you there that that's in the movie Finding Nemo. All right, let's keep going here. Besides the coral animals and other things grow in a coral reef. Plants called plankton and algae grow there. These plants, I think that should say plants, I'm sorry. These plants take the bright sunshine that comes into the water and turn it into food. These tiny plants are very important to the health of the coral reef. Fish live in the coral reef too. Some animals like the food they find there and eat the small plants. Others eat the larger plants. The coral reef is an important part of the food chain. It provides homes and food for many creatures. The scientists say that nearly one out of every four of all ocean animals use the coral reef. Some stay there all the time, while others use it as a place to rest or find food. Next page. Coral reefs are also important to people. All of the plants in the reef help clean Earth's air. This is very a very important job because without clean air, most things on Earth would die. Coral reefs also protect the land. When storms come, the coral reefs help to slow down the water. That makes people and homes safer on the shore. Some of the animals that live in coral reefs are important food for people. For example, some kinds of lobsters live in coral reefs, and many people like to eat lobsters. Scientists think that coral reefs can also someday provide medicine and other things to help doctors. 
Coral reefs are important because they bring visitors to the islands and beaches. Many people want to see the coral reefs so they can swim there and take pictures. These visitors help bring money into these areas. They eat, stay in hotels, and do other fun things while they are visiting. So many people have jobs because of coral reefs. A coral reef is very beautiful. Many reefs are brightly colored, and there are many different kinds of plants and animals that live there. Some of the plants and animals can only live in coral reefs, and it is important to save the reefs. Coral reefs are dying all around the world. The animals that make the coral shells are being killed by pollution and by people being careless while fishing or visiting. They are dying because the oceans are getting too warm for them. People will have to work together to save the coral reefs. All right, guys. So here's what we're going to do now. There are three things I need you to have. I need you to have this text the world of coral reefs. I need you to have your box of crayons. Okay, have your box of crayons and then a clipboard. You do not need a pencil. I do not want you writing any answers. I will check over your paper and first look to see if you have the correct answers and then we can write down answers together. But for right now, for today, you are not to write anything with a pencil. You are only going to use your crayons, go back in the text and find details, find sentences that prove, explain, or show all of the statements that we have underlined here. Okay, so again, you and your partner, if you find a sentence that shows you that animals depend on coral reefs to live, underline it in red. So on and so forth here with the rest of the questions. Um, so once this video is over, I'm not done yet, but once this video is over, take those three things, your text, your crayons, and your clipboard, go find your partner. Your partner's name is on the student assignment chart. Go find your partner, go to your designated area that I have assigned for you, go ahead and have a seat, and get started working, okay? And I will have already showed you your designated spot in our pod area here, and you'll also be able to find it uh, with your name. Your name's gonna be typed on a little sheet of paper, and you'll know that that is your work area. Okay, so you and your partner, you're gonna take your materials, go find your assigned area, sit down and go ahead and start working together. Once you are done with this, don't lose this, okay, because I'm going to need to look at it. So put it in a safe place, put your clipboard back in your desk, put your crayons back in your desk, and then just go onto your student assignment chart that's on Google Classroom, and it will tell you what to do from there. So at this point, the video is now over. Go find your partner, and have fun, guys. Bye.